Worcester, Massachusetts, is the third largest city in New England. 150,000 people live here, but most of the poor and the black people live in one small section, an area called Laurel Clayton, where once gracious homes were falling victim to disregard and disrepair. Nobody was doing anything about it. This film is about a company that did do something about it. In 1968, the Worcester Redevelopment Authority asked State Mutual Life Assurance Company to help in the redevelopment of this, their national headquarters city. Specifically, a 14-acre site in the Laurel Clayton area. How do you tell 260 families that you're knocking down their homes? I don't think you find need to have rat infested housing around here, would you say? We have the bus stop over there, and everything's close, you know. Where can you find them places to live while you build them their new homes? How do you involve them in the plans for their future community? Where can you find rent subsidies for those who can't afford new and better housing? They've been stalling around so much that the, and people here gave up hopes and got sick over it, and they repaired. I'm not worth it. How can you untangle the government's red tape? I'm worth them three, going on three well, weeks. So what's the sense of moving out of one ghetto into another? Where am I going to go? I've been on the street since 1930. Yeah, where are they going to throw me? No place to throw me. <laughs> These were tough questions for a company with no prior experience in urban development. But State Mutual said yes, they would help. I never go home. Most of this project succeeded. Some of this project failed. But all of this project was filmed because State Mutual wanted others to see what was done here in Worcester, Massachusetts, and learn from it. This film is not about building with bricks and mortar. It's about rebuilding lives. I think, first of all, that we, because we'd become involved with the Redevelopment Authority in the downtown area, we were aware of the, the, of the programs that they were trying to develop. And Laurel Clayton just naturally followed Mr. Plumley, the chairman of the board of this company, who was very sincere in his desire to fill this gap. As a matter of fact, he had spoken to me several times about the need for this company to become involved in urban affairs. Here is a basic determination to have in terms of people's living in joint something in Worcester that is the finest thing in America and perhaps in the Western world. We have every confidence that having given this to the residents of that area, that it will be maintained by them and by us with consummate pride. How can a person uh, uh, feel any pride in living in a, a box? Uh, with the uh, sure he's, he's warm and he's, uh, he's out of the weather and all that kind of stuff, but we felt that uh, that was just wasn't that was only a very small part of the answer. Shelter was a very small part of the answer. We had we wanted something that that would that would create a little uh, pride of ownership, shall we say? Even though they, this will be a wholly owned product of our company, we have been concerned to keep the. Uh, as much as possible of the general, what we call the folkways of the neighborhood. Now that's easier said than done, obviously. But uh, it is uh, going to be particularly important, I think, in the next stage where we, uh, and depending on the success of getting some of those people who are in the community to both live there and to do business there. My brother used to live in this big building here. They ain't toured yet. There's a brick building there. My brother used to live here. My brother, the, the, the little cottage is your vacant lot over there. He's lived, but my brother now is dead and gone. Hi, Willie. How are you, uh, Brother Harris? Good, good. Uh, fine, they've taken my life history. Now, I used to stop here and talk oh, with Mr. Oh, I'm glad. This is I'm Mr. Glad. Harris. I used to speak with him. Oh, and I had a friend that lived on the top floor there, too. This is my landlord. Uh, that mean old man I was telling you about. 
Well, for instance, today we had lunch with the planning, with the chairman of the planning board and his, one of his associates. Of course, the redevelopment authority is forever involved. Uh, we have to go through a design review panel. The city council, the uh, board of health, the uh, building inspector, the building department of the city of Worcester. We're putting money into this project every day in an effort to, to get a better design, a, a total better uh, thing when we, when we finish. As against the typical uh, builder who has to build for a profit, that's the name of the game today. I mean, you can't stay in business if you don't make a profit. Are you so making less profit or no? We're not making any profit. We do not anticipate, uh, well, we have to get a small return on our money, but we are limiting this. The money that goes in, into this project will be held, will be, the return on that money will be held to the lowest reasonable figure that we can possibly live with. When they take the neighborhood down, you have a barber shop, you're going to lose, you know, all those customers are moving out. Not all of them. Some will come back and get out of it, you know. But then the ones that have to walk, they won't walk, you know. I, I can't go off and buy the same type of, type of home I got for the same money they give me. They paid me more than I paid for the house, but don't forget I fixed it a lot. And the price of housing going up, so if I go out and try to buy that house for the same money, I can't do it, you know. One of the problems with redevelopment is that it, uh, it forces people to change their whole way of living. Just because a house is in a, an area that the redevelopment authority considers uh, dilapidated and run down, doesn't mean that the guy that lives there isn't happy with his house. As a matter of fact, in the Laurel Clayton area, I, unlike so many areas that are being rehabilitated, there are some very attractive little homes down there. There was a, a higher percentage than normal of, of ownership in that area. To do this thing right, the whole ball of wax had to be cleared. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of neighborhoods in our city. You know, as far as trouble or anything, we don't have any trouble that way. And people are neighborly. People you've known all your days, and as the different ones die or move away, you miss them. That's for sure. Come up here and get it. Come on. Merry Christmas. Well, you don't have to beg. We ain't gonna beg you to take. We didn't beg you to come in. But I want you to know that one of the greatest contributors to your Christmas party is City Councilor George A. Wells. Now, we've been coming down here a long time, and we know the work that these fellows are doing, and we hope you all have a great time today. Efforts that I gave Santa Claus something, I didn't. Santa Claus gave me something. <laughs> good, good boy. Merry Christmas. Wow. And it seemed to come on very loud and clear that uh, if you're going to do this, these things and do them properly, you've got to involve the people who live there. So the Redevelopment Authority thought, well, they would set up a committee to work with the people to get their feelings, bring their feelings back, and we would learn firsthand as to what's going on. Well, this was the first plan they unveiled, which uh, we didn't see other than being in the paper. Whether this is a, the actual plan or not, I don't know. Well, if we are the liaison committee, we have to be there to, so that we can keep the people informed. Otherwise, we're useless. We're wasting my time, your time, and Bert's time. And Reverend Hargrove, who has many things to do, George, who has other things to do. It's kind of foolish to be sitting here worrying about what's going on, and they come out with an article in the paper that we can't answer for. And yet you hear people so many times say, as long as we got effective communication, we, 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 I don't know what they call effective communication. There's no doubt that the, that the, the uh, state mutual's lines of communication broke down in this effort. There's no doubt about it. Wherever in Worcester there are problems, they are my problems and your problems. We must participate. This is not only good business, it is essential for the social welfare of this community. Some of the old buildings were very nice. There was a certain kind of harmony in the, uh, uh, in the materials.
we're going to try to do something time, really some magnificent doing. here. Well, it, it, it appears that from what we have seen to be a very forward-looking project, and I, I hope that uh, it can be developed. Elm tree blight has hit the area. You probably noticed a lot of uh, dead ones, but I think there's uh, enough worth saving. Well, Mr. Warren just asked me about how do you go about applying for getting back into the area into Wonder Complex. Let us. Let us. Let us. Anyone who's living here now gets the first crack at it. Well, there's only one type that I could even... The five bedroom? <laughs> even a bother to even <laughs> look at, really. Children, yeah. Eight. Oh, well, More you need that, right? <laughs> That's a... Yeah. Can have you decided uh, on any price range with the... On a rent, as far as... That's what I thought you had. <laughs> well, hey, at least we'll get some, some, some idea now. Well, that's our problem. What the actual dollars are, I don't know, but the under the what they call the 236 program, the government picks up about a third, as it works out, a third of the rental. And depending on your income and the number of kids, of course, you get a bigger... The rents, you know, aren't quite so much. What does this, what does this beat consist of tonight? Will somebody explain this gathering to me being a resident? With you, should have, some... you should have been here early. Early? I've been here for 40 years, baby. <laughs> oh, earlier this evening. Oh, I understand your point. You have a definite time that we're supposed to get together so we can iron out our problems. See, most of us. Uh are involved in designing the Laurel Clayton neighborhood, the new... No, wait, stop, right there. Here's what I want to ask you a question. You're paying the people to move out of here, right? Are you paying them to move back? I understand that they have to pay to move back. Well, that's not our rule, that's the federal government. The rule is, the rule is I'm trying to get across the... I don't know if you dig me or not. I dig you completely. Who is going to move in these high rises? We hope that most of them will be able to move back. They will not. How can they afford to move back? Well, they, I don't know. I don't know how much it costs to move. I, I don't know how to get around the problem. They've got to pay to move back. There's no question about that. Doing that under his own free will. Yeah, well, well, I got my head. Hey, well, well, when the people want to live there, it's going to cost them a fortune. You said no. Well, he you wants are. it for 20 you years, know, 10 years for nothing. We're tax free, isn't he? And he's going to get it. There has been this statement of good intentions. Some of it has worked out beautiful. But at this crucial stage when people are wondering why the delay, why the lack of the rehabilitated homes, you know, what's the cost per unit? These are questions that have been recurring. They ain't gonna do shit. That's all good. They ain't gonna do you shit. You wait, all these people have moved out of here so they can tear them down and build this here low income housing project or whatever they call it. Thing or get back in. The, the biggest thing you learn in any of these things, in anything, as a matter of fact, and that is, don't don't tell anybody what you'll do, uh, because yeah, you can't yeah. do it. See, and even if you can do 99 and 9 tenths percent of it, you haven't done it all. Then they say an express. Then they say it's going to be a highway. They got to widen the highway. You, you know, you hear so many stories. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, rumors circulating. Yeah. So nobody knows about exactly yet what really is going on. They don't come around and tell you nothing. Uh, five 
five main south, five rooms, newly decorated, adults only. Newly decorated May Street, five rooms, adults only. Um, all right, three and a half rooms, which nobody can use or nobody with children needs. Three and a half rooms near State Mutual, ranch style kitchen appliance heated. All right, there's one. We're going to do a three and a half room. And if you look in the papers every evening, there everything in that paper is nothing but adults. Five, six, and seven room apartments. Adults only. Now I have never received from the Worcester Bee Development Authority an invitation to go look at a house, period. I cannot afford to go out here and buy a house. I'm not going to get myself hung up in a whole lot of debt that I can't afford to pay for. And it seems to me that I'm just by pants. That here I am sitting up here by myself and to have with me what I feel I am a human being and I am sick and tired of being treated like something else. We at this time are not trying to push anybody out of the project area. Um, if anybody requests assistance, we will render assistance. But it's our understanding that we're going to uh, work with the people and that uh, a lot of them wish to stay in the area in order to move directly into uh, the housing that's to be built in the area. Um, and uh, have referrals been made to you of any no. sort? Not a one. Um, well, uh, Mayor, yeah. Um, the only, I, I've, I've got to add here in all fairness, however, Ruby, you asked? All right, Robbie. Uh, you know, originally we were talking about a purchased building. You wanted to purchase something. We referred you to Max Weck. Um, of the right. 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 well this is as recent of within a month or so ago right. now you know you're telling us that you want an apartment versus a home I don't think you know you've been in the office since you've changed your mind back to an apartment I have requested an apartment I have requested to rent a house to rent an apartment to rent something and I have never even had the courtesy of being called up and saying well, Robbie, we'd like to show you an apartment. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mrs. Fair, we will do everything we can to help you find an apartment. Um, I've heard that before. If we have not found you one and you are in phase one, we will find you something uh, of a temporary nature until one can be found. Why should I have to move two or three times? That's a headache. I have to work every day. I did not ask the WRA or anybody to put me out of their house. I don't have any other choice. So why should I want to move on site and then move again? I'm saying that if it becomes necessary, we will take care of you on site. 224 families, black and white, poor, have been deceived and checked out of their homes in a long plate area. State Mutual, a company that invests in war machinery, that makes money off of taking lives and homes of Vietnam. It's doing the same thing right here to a poor and black white community of Worcester. <laughs> State mutual. Getting reduction from government of 40 years taxes from the city is building supposedly a low income project with rents that go from $140 to $166. You know that's going to be a middle income home project. But communication, by the way, would always break down because there just aren't, there, there are not enough hours in the day, nor enough people with a concern to get out there and go knocking on each door and get a hold of Willie Salmon and say, now Willie, your house is going to come down and we're gonna build a new thing and it's gonna take four years and six months. And it takes four years and seven months and we lied. You may say, what is the connection? Some of you may say, State Mutual housing project is racist. The Vietnam War is racist. It is men like State Mutual who invest in war machinery that are in Vietnam. Lad Plumley and the boys can't hear you from up there. They're sitting down there in their swimming pool. They've got society people to a building, and they can't hear what you're saying down here. We have to take the charges to them. We have to take the will of the people to them. So come with us. 
stay mutual. All power to the people. Power to the people. Just think that when you're talking SDS or, um, or, or look at the Revolutionary Students Union, you're not talking Laurel Clayton and Rance and everything. These people have other interests in mind. Are they coming out? Everybody join here! We got into a half circle. I'm glad to see you here today to testify to your interest in the well-being of that community which is literally no more because all of the people who lived in that area have been moved out and as has already been indicated they many of them live in much worse conditions now than they did before they were relocated i do not believe that the people who were removed from law claim will ever get back there regardless to what state mutual says <laughs> I don't care how few or how many we're going to come back here. And all the pig lions and all the pig guys are not going to keep us from taking that building down brick by brick. Yeah. Yeah. You have the power to decide if you want to cross those lines now or if you want to wait until six. remember one thing, and that is that most, I think maybe every, low and modern income housing development has been built by people who are building them for one reason, and that is to build them, sell them, and get out, get on with the show. This is encouraged by the FHA, by the way. But we haven't done that, and in spite of what the protesters out here in the front yard had to say and all that kind of stuff, this has never been our modus operandi. We started out to do something in a social way. And we intend to continue do, doing that unless they do, in fact, get the bricks down in this building before we finish. Then we'll have to stop and build this building first. <laughs> I would like to, to take this opportunity to introduce to those of you who do not know the... Uh, I was going to say guests, but they're not. They're fellow associates at the head table. Arthur Martin, Dix Davis, Susan Willoughby, and Bill Davis. How much... Hostility have you encountered during this whole thing? Oddly enough, the WRA has had favorable uh, commentary. If there's one or two people who were uh, moved from their former home to something worse, you can understand why the people are a little bitter, why they're a little upset. Hello, Mr. Diamond. Yeah. Uh, my name is Bill Davis, and I'm from a state mutual life insurance company. And I was wondering if I could speak to you for a little while about the Laura Clayton uh, project. Yeah, anytime. All right, thank you. Uh, the most important problem, I guess, for you, whether you'd be able to move in in terms of the, the rents that will be charged. And as you, as you already know, the residents of the Lower Clayton area get preference. How many uh, people are in your family? Four. Four. I want three bedrooms. Right. Now it's five rooms and all. And that's counting the kitchen and the parlor. Now that would mean that your, the rent, if you were just eligible for minimum assistance, your rent would be $159. Now, if your income 
and you, is under $6,500, you'd be eligible for additional assistance, which means your rent will be lower than $159 for a three-bedroom unit. Um, your rent might be as low as $80 a month, $85 a month, or $90 a month. If I'm alone and I'm not working, for instance, I'm on oh. my uh, old age, yeah, okay. then what? Then what would happen is that your rent would probably be uh, much, much, much lower than, uh, say, if you want a one-bedroom unit, be much, much lower than $140. It'd probably be um, maybe $80 a month, maybe $70 a month. And, uh, that's what I'm getting. That's what you get. Oh, that's what you're getting, $70 a month for all days? I've been getting 85 now. They raised it. It's uh, a few dollars extra now. Oh, so what am I going to eat? See, this house here that I had, I've been living free. Because the house belonged to me and my sister. And we don't pay no rent and nothing, you know. I mean, now I start paying rent to the WRA. But we've been living over here free. No rent, nothing, and I was comfortable. Now at this age, we bought the house for this age, and now they're taking it away. I don't know, those people, they don't understand all people. You said that you're getting, you're only getting $80 a month. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. The kitchen dining area here. Yeah. Okay, that's one type. Uh, you know, the street bedroom. Wow. So here's another one. Uh, this is low rise again. You have your living room here, your kitchen dining area, your master bedroom, your two bedrooms, and then you have a bathroom. And I think State Mutual realizes that when you have a commitment and, you know, a more or less social commitment, it can't be a half, how can one say, uh, a half felt or have heart commitment, but it must be a full commitment, because there are quite a few problems that are arising and that have arisen, not so much because of State Mutual, but because of their action, or in other words, for them building Laurel Clayton, other problems have arisen uh, surrounding it, and now they must also be willing to cope with that. Yeah. Now, as I understand it, all you're going to need from us tomorrow is a check for $30,000 for the, uh, the uh, good faith deposit, and $43,000 for the land, certified checks. Okay. Of taxes? I don't I know nothing about nobody said anything to me about taxes. Well I better Yeah. There was a change of plans late yesterday afternoon when the authority was informed by telephone calls that legal proceedings were to be commenced against the authority to uh, have a restraining order issued to prevent the conveyance of the land by the authority to State Mutual Life Insurance Company. In view of the fact that the State Mutual has already spent approximately $600,000 as of this day, I uh, ordered the attorneys involved to appear at the redevelopment office and the conveyance of Worcester Center took place at 8.30 this morning. It's been very frustrating, probably uh, through basically because of our inexperience in dealing with the federal government and federal government, state government, uh, local governmental agencies, even though they appear to be cooperating and uh, I guess are cooperating to the fullest extent of their capabilities, uh, they just don't move at the same pace that we in uh, normal business enterprises move. Nobody will make a decision, nobody will take the bull by the horns and say, okay, go ahead. Everybody says, well, we have to ask this fellow or that fellow under the consequence. It just doesn't work. We hadn't been morally involved, you might say. Uh, economically, we've made a great, uh, we're making a contribution that I think is over and far over and above beyond the call of duty, shall we say. We uh, certainly uh, have been put to task uh, about, for about 90% about of the reasons we've been taken to task. If not, we've had no, no control over, nothing to do with it, except all we've been asked to do is pay the bill. And uh, I think, uh, I think a, a sensible thing to do would have or would have been to pull out a long time ago. But uh, we just filed a commitment to the community that we we, we said we'd do something. We we're going to do it. They're going to put a big 
building. They're going to put a nice building up. And knock down the other ones and take all the bricks and stuff away. Of course, you got to take all your stuff out. Strictly enforced. 
They should have somebody with a, you know, decent mind and everything, so she know what's uh, needed over there. Yeah. Well, it's sunny. It's, it's sunny. all right. For that part, it's okay. How about, but we like the shower. Beautiful. Uh, the shower is uh, really good, good but uh, yeah. it's just bonded. We can always. Well, it's really powerful, hot water and everything. It's really nice, you know. I like that part. What divides this neighborhood was, is what divides society. So you have the same forces in this neighborhood that you have in society. And this neighborhood does not necessarily solve society's problems. 
and does not solve the way the people in the neighborhood um, uh, deal with society's problems. It can perhaps be a, a stepping stone, but by, by no means can it, it, it be the panacea for society. Because society as a whole has to change in order for the people in this neighborhood to radically or dramatically change their lifestyles. I think one problem that we do have in terms of expectations is that we expect this neighborhood to solve society's problems. When in fact it doesn't have the power to do that. Governor, I'd like you to meet Bill Davis. Bill works for Street Mutual. He's, he, uh, Bill handles our problems. Oh, I people that, uh, imagine you hear about him. Yeah, uh, yeah. And he's doing a great job. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, great job. Isn't this attractive? I'm yeah. very yeah. 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 well, well, cheerful. This is Campbell. Is this, uh, we were here then during the winter. We, yes, we were the first families that we came in in February. Oh, the heat and everything yeah. was just wonderful. I really enjoyed it. My children, we all are. <laughs> it really is wonderful. Great, yes, sir. Quite a I change. I out of the gallery this morning. Oh. The ladies came yeah. up to me and said, Mr. Pomley, we're going to move into your house next month. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I said, are you looking forward to it? And I said, oh, yes. This is my other daughter, Deborah. Come oh, hi. 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 How are you? We walk right by you. Isn't that wicked? <laughs> well, I just, thank you very much. I just would, Miss Campbell, do you want to stand over here? I just would like to say that I'm, uh, I'm tremendously pleased to have a chance to see this Wonderful. This is called Village East, isn't Pumley. it? Pumley Village. Pumley Village East. And, and I, I think that uh, the, the, the risk and, and the leadership that you and your company took in terms of developing this magnificent facility is, is exciting not only for Worcester, but for this country. This is one of the first, and, and uh, here is an example of, of private enterprise recognizing the, the importance to a community and to a city to provide that leadership and I want to say that I'm proud of you and proud of your company and certainly all of the people that have the uh, opportunity to live here uh, agree that this should be the wave of the future that we we should have confidence in the future of the cities and I'm tremendously impressed I'm pleased to see your apartment and I thank you very much for giving me a chance to you here well, it's a great honor for us to have sure you here uh, Frank and what you've said about uh, investing in, in homes etc you have put into words the same kind of philosophy that, that we were thinking of when we went into this because you know, under our obligations, we could have invested in, in some kind of a mortgage in Chicago or Salt Lake City uh, and said we fulfilled our obligation. Uh, we thought we should do it in our own hometown. Okay. Okay. Sure. Don't overdo it. That's so far we have to pull it. Thank you. Good luck, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. In connection with this whole area, we did have, uh, you know, a rather basic conviction that that we weren't going to have another project. That physically it was going to be different, and physically it is different. But as we go along, we realize more and more that while we originally were thinking with decent homes, uh, now we're thinking of the beauty of a social environment, of social lives, of the development of people uh, uh, living together, to have enjoyment, to have fulfillment. This is the big thing from now on. I think our conviction is that you may not have to have the environment to get these things, but oh Lord, it's so almighty easy if, if you have it than if you're working with squalor and, and dilapidation and deterioration. We feel that we are pioneers in uh, uh, building something 
and staying with it and becoming living partners of people. And I would hope that other corporations, or even perhaps uh, individuals of substantial means in this and surrounding communities could say when they see this actual demonstration of what can be done, this is the kind of thing that we should do and we are willing to uh, endure the travail that we know is there uh, because, well, because it's the way to live. Three years and millions of dollars have been spent in this neighborhood. The apartments are up and the people are moving in. But what we have just seen is only the beginning. State Mutual will continue its day-in and day-out concern for the needs of the people and the programs they want in the years ahead. If I knew you were coming the night of big cake, if I knew you were coming the night of big cake, how'd you do, how'd you do, how'd you do? If I knew you were coming, I would make a cake. If I knew you were coming, I would make a cake. If I knew you were coming, I would make a cake. How you do, how you do, how you do.